Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with George Drew, of course, the Scarander. And today I have my first NUCL match. If you guys don't know, NUCL is um, a new league, um, a draft-based NU league, nothing special to it. It's actually a really interesting one. It's a lot of fun, a lot of good, funny people are in it, so it's more of a laid-back um, league for me, but I really enjoy the people that are in it, therefore I'm actually a part of it. And today we're going up against Star Dasher, and you guys have been following, know exactly who this guy is. He's a very powerful trainer, and uh, he has a real nice draft. And my planning against him was actually not... It's actually it's a bit vague, but I did expect Excelgor, Gramble, and Shifter and Hiriyama to be part of his team. And Claydol might be a real big deal here, so I've decided that I must bring Pelipper. Pelipper is actually a hard wall in this guy. Uh, it's a rocky helmet with a lot of defense investment to actually take a Thunder Punch from Hiriyama with 60%. Uh, I was basically hoping for Rocky Helmet combinations to actually take that out. So um, that was my main plan. Plus, Pelipper actually forced out Ladles, which is real nice. Outside of that, I sub Strike Gap, Scarf Magmar, only for Excelgore. Uh, Mesprit, which has been Assault Vested, um, uh, Pangoro being Scarfed, and Rock Polish Ride On. Uh, my sub Strike has the wrong set here, though it actually did not matter too much. But it was supposed to be a Scarf set too. So, um, yeah, you know, that's a thing, but. In all in all, it definitely didn't matter. Uh, from the get-go, I'm gonna predict him to start off with either Hiriyama or Claydool to get some damage. The only Pokemon that can hurt my Pelipper is his, um, well, Electavar, and I wonder if that even can hurt me that much. So, with all this in mind, guys, let's go. Alright, wow, green screen. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Like I said there, uh, I did kind of see Star Dasher how he wanted to play out this game, so I was trying to... Um, Work around as much as I can, so Quack is gonna join here, and I'm just gonna go for Skull. While I do see Hariyama coming here, I was not fearing Hariyama being of a gut set, because he kinda needs to thick fat this game. So, I was thinking that I'm actually kinda free here to go for Skull. Uh, I don't get the burn, which is unfortunate, but that definitely showed me that he's a Soul Vested. Like I said, I don't see him being able to hurt me that much, and I can force him down, which is what I'm gonna do. But he surprised me with a knockoff. Which doesn't do enough damage. Thunder Punch is still not an area we can take me out, but it does suck to some extent. Uh, so I'm just going to scold there because Air Slash is not enough, and I think if he doesn't have Thunder Punch, he's going to preserve that. And so is the case. He's going to go to Ion. And um, yeah, still not getting burned. Still not getting it. I don't know. When I play leagues, I get burned all the time, but it doesn't work the other way around. So anyway, my opponent does a very nice um, switch out here. He's going to bring the. Shiftler, and I think I decided to go for Sep Striker here. Since I had Air Balloon on it, I actually can deal with uh, the opponent's um, <laughs> Electavar, but obviously, this, like I said, it's still a wrong set. But luckily here, I do predict him to bring back the Clay Duel. I was thinking that that must have been his safest play. Even if he decides to stay in, I can still be beat him one-on-one. -on -one. So anyway, I predicted right there and Clay Duel is back, but now I can't switch in Hiriyama because he will die, basically. So it's going for Toxic, which is unfortunate, it puts my uh, Pelipper on a timer, but at the same time, um, my Skull does shit. Like, it does really, really little damage. Uh, you know, that's the price you pay for being fully defensive, though. I needed that to be a part or deal with uh, the Hiriyama properly. Uh, so, I know he's going to get his Rock up. there's really nothing I can do, and since I have speed, I can't really go for Defog. So I need to keep scalding basically, uh, because I'm not in an area where I could keep roosting or anything like that. I do score a crit here, uh, luckily it doesn't matter, I still haven't burned anything with skull, I think that's the fifth skull hits right now. So yeah, awesome. So anyway, my HP is you know, getting lower and I don't really know how to play this one around. He's actually gonna switch out here, which would have been a golden opportunity for me of course to go for uh, a defog. I do presume I actually go for a roost here to try to get a better footing. Yeah, that's exactly what I do, but I also will see that the Toxic is um, pointing out, but at the same time I can't switch out because I know it's going to go for Fake Out and that's going to hurt. So I'm kind of forced to stay in here, even though the Toxic is still not doing a whole lot. The combination here is definitely not of my liking, and like I said, I really need to stay in there. I couldn't risk the Fake, I couldn't risk a potential close combat either. So I'm just going to switch out here. Mesprit is going to be able to deal with this area properly. He's not going to go for a close combat or... Uh, knockoff, uh, or he could potentially go for close combat, predicting the, um, predicting the roost, but he's actually gonna hard switch out, which is okay. He's gonna bring Ion, and um, I can't really do a whole lot here. Like I said, this Mesprit was kind of a weird set. I don't really know 
why I am assault vested, but you know what? No matter. Let's just go with it. Um, <laughs> so it's gonna bring Pug Life, and I think I decided here to go for a U-turn, getting some momentum if anything. No, it went for knockoff. I shut that thing down. Huh? That actually works. Um, so here's our leftovers, and now we're gonna go for U-turn. Here's the thing. I know that man, uh, that the Rhydon is um, pretty much walling this guy, so with that in mind, I knew I could just bring it in you know, without any ramification and uh, basically go for heavy damage. Um, Earthquake and Play Rough is not doing a whole lot to me, and I'm immune to Thunder Wave. And it looks like his fourth move is the roll, and that's okay. That only means that I need to force that Mon down. Now we're gonna go to Fire Goose! And... Um, like I said, Fire Goose is a Scarf variant, and I'm just gonna hit off with those Fire Blasts. Uh, Magmar is definitely a key player this, in this game, if anything. Now, as you guys saw, his uh, Clay Duel is um, very special defensive. It took the Skull without an issue, and it lives that Fire Blast. That's just... wow. That is so cool. Um, I'm just gonna keep spamming Fire Blast, because let's say he gets another power off. It still won't be an area of killing me, because I'm still a Magmar, and it's actually... Fairly especially defensive, and consider his set there, he's, I should be able to deal with that. Now, obviously, he's gonna bring back the Hiriyama. Uh, while a Fire Blast may be able to take it out, maybe, uh, I'm still not a part, I wanna risk that, and plus, I know he's gonna go for, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fake out, anyway. Um, so, I just took the time to bring in Quack because I can leave the combination it's together with Toxic. Now, here's where I play a bit bad. Honestly, I like looking back at this play, like starting to suggest that why wouldn't he not go for a close combat? Close combat is definitely a 50% hit. So going for that was kind of bad because Air Slash would definitely area of taking him out, or a defog to get off, of course, he, the rocks, which is really not affecting me that much. But yeah, that's my play, and that's how you lose Quack, basically. Yeah, I was um, I was bad. I was really, really stupid of me. So I can bring Typhoon. Uh, I thought it was a good play, but once it hit me, alright, he still got, uh, you know, the motor drive, which means that I can't do it, I need to go for overheat, which could be dangerous. He could potentially take this hit. Luckily, he doesn't do it. But as I said, um, I was thinking a Thunderbolt would be able to take it out, or a Volt Switch, but I already remember that, oh shit, I still can't. So here comes this guy, Axelgor. And I was so sure it's gonna live this bug bus. I really were. But he's gonna show me as life orb, which is something I'm gonna be honest, I did not expect. I was thinking that I had focus sash. So that was really bad of me because I knew I could take <laughs> the bug bus. But not like that. Definitely not like that. So anyway, I'm gonna bring Fire Goose here. He already knows I must be scarfed, if anything. And even if I weren't, he's not gonna be able to take me out if I were a violite. So he's gonna bring Ion back again here. And uh, Fire Blast is definitely an area of taking him out. And uh, Magmar being naturally speedy is actually faster than Electivire, so if he were Scarf, then he just wasted his Scarf right here and then, Magmar just pulling through, which is awesome. I can't deny that, that is so cool. So anyway, uh, he's gonna bring Pug Life here, and I had a decision to make here. I was thinking that, alright, you know what, since he had Roar, I need to force him down a bit of HP, so even though it goes for Thunder Wave, this must still be my best play, so I'm gonna force him down in HP, and I'm close to actually taking him out. And here comes the Thunder Wave, and I was thinking, I have an opportunity here. I can let Magmar forward to Earthquake, no problem at all, and I can go for Rock Polish uh, with my Rhydon, because he can't risk the Roar now that he has a low amount of HP. Well, he doesn't have Earthquake, and I'm not fully paralyzed, so I basically kill the Mon I could set up on, that was my whole idea from the get-go, Rhydon's gonna sweep this thing with Megahorn and whatnot, I basically ruined myself right there and then, and uh, I wasn't too frustrated over it because I do recognize that wow, I lost now. I I can't, I can't stop the Axelgor now because the, my response to it is paralyzed, and uh, without a rock polish, Giga Rain is definitely gonna kill me. So as I bring in my special defensive Mesprit here, hoping that Assault Vest will save it. It will not. It will just break through and. Um, my only response here is, of course, the uh, the Pangoro, but really, it doesn't really matter because um, I can't really do anything here. I could have locked myself into Crunch here, but I really want to lock myself into Stormfro to kill the Shift Tree, which is something I can't do. So I actually decided to go for a Parting Shot, hoping... Actually, I don't know what I was trying to achieve, to be honest with you guys, I have no idea. At this point, I was like, yeah, 
it's over. Um, I can't stop this. And um, like I said, I wasn't really too mad about it. Uh, I did. I presumed that the Gramble was going to be have an earthquake. You know, they always do. So when he didn't have that, I was like, yeah, it's it's a bad set he's using, but it definitely ends up saving him because of that. And I was like, just shaking my head, like, why? Why did I not just sack Mesprit, who obviously had had no purpose in this game in the first place, being that I had Shift Tree left? And he had uh, Accelerator left, I could not have speed those mons anyway. And obviously this is just really, really painful to watch. Uh, like I said, those stars plays a very, very good game. I have the game from... Um, <laughs> I actually have the game from the get-go. But uh, that, that play was so fragilely done that it actually just made my whole team fall apart. And obviously he's a Accelerator getting a 4-0 here. Uh, it's unfortunate, but at the same time... I didn't. I, I destroyed all the necessary plays I had to work around it, and that's why I lose. So GG Star Asher and God damn it. So yeah, I wasn't really necessarily mad about this outcome to be honest. You know, I, I made that bad call. Um, that obviously is it was all that was needed to break through my team of anything and actually make a wide opening for him. Like I said, uh, I had the game actually till that point. It was nothing really stopping me. Mesprit could have been a good sack for there. And actually bring Rhydon afterwards and actually go for damage instead. I wouldn't I would still just spam a Magmar and I would actually win this game. And Pangoro actually win walls the shifter quite fine. So that was a really bad call of me, and obviously I paid dearly for that. Um, me assuming that Gramble was, you know, the standard set was um, you know, that's how you lose. That's pretty much how you lose. I could have played safe. I thought that you know I had a game from there, so I, I was so sure I was gonna sack or uh, rock polish on the Gramble that you know, I ruined myself with that, I really did, and uh, yeah, I think Stars plays a good game, though I do have the game till that point, then it all falls asunder, you know, and that's part of the game too, like, I'm a, what, I, what I go for six skulls, did not get a burn, but I did break through the paralysis first turn, huh, you know, that, that's that's the game for you, if anything, uh, though I do want to thank Stars for that game, I think it plays a good game in general, I think it was well prepared for me, um, Sadly, I was a bit frustrated that I thought, I pl I, like I said, I played a bit better. But you know, if you make a play like I did right there, then you know you you gonna lose. You you can't do that. You just you can't assume that you can have set, fought or something off. And actually, him not say or him not having the Gramble set that I was presuming. Um, so Magmar actually killing Gramble is actually the reason I lose, which is kind of funny thinking about it. But anyway, Star Edge, thanks so much for the battle. I'm really looking forward to battle you again in the future. And if everybody's been watching, make sure to, of course, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, guys, take care. Bye.